Good night, welcome. My name is Kenya Harvey and I am the project coordinator and MWBE consultant for the Entrepreneurial Center. And I thank you all for joining us tonight. Tonight, we're gonna to be talking about the MWBE, New York State MWBE certification and what it can do for business, small businesses and especially. Um, tonight, we have a, a panel of certified business owners that are here to share their stories about the application process, um, about contracting opportunities and, and uh, procurement, uh, networking for procurement as well. And they're gonna talk about what being certified can do for, the, do for their business or even help it grow. Um, so the first panelist will come on and that would be Lorraine. Uh, introduce herself, talk about her business and her um, certification status, and then just- Hi, Ken, how are you? Good, good, thank you for joining. So Lorraine, you go ahead and introduce yourself and um, we'll listen out. Hi, how are you? My name is Lorraine Roberts. I own a big called Hello Alert, Inc. I do emergency services. I own two New York State contracts, um, a radio con and a security contract. Um, I got, uh, for, when I first started, um, I'm a small business, but then I became a, a woman-owned business in the year of 2013. Uh, my original application was 2013. At first time, they, get, they gave me a five-year status, and then I renewed with Kenya in 2019, and it's a three, I have a three-year status because mine expires 2022. The process of first getting certified is a, is a little complicated because they drill you to make sure you're the owner, which is okay. If you're the owner, you have all the answers. So that was okay. It went smoothly. Getting the documents together, they tell you actually what you really need. And at first it was like a little harder because they didn't have like stuff like they have today. Like Kenya gave me a band now with all my information on it. We back in 2013, it was a lot of just paperwork we had and we held on to it with our dear life, you know? But other than that, Kenya has made this very pleasurable to be recertified. It was a very easy process the second time. So. Oh, and so like what has the certification done for your business to help it grow? And especially now in COVID. Okay. Okay, in COVID, well, like I said, I'm emergency service, so I've never stopped working. Um, and essentially, like I said, I have two contracts on the New York State contracting system, which they're very hard to get, but I had them since 2008. Um, so what it actually does for you, of course, now they want minority-owned businesses and women-owned businesses. They stand out very much. Mm -hmm. So um, actually, you will be presented if you know how to network, and you really don't have to do that much networking, because a lot of these companies, like myself, on contracts need minority-owned businesses and women-owned businesses. We have to have a utilization of those. Mm -hmm. So we'd be reaching out to you mm -hmm. if you're in my field. Mm -hmm. And that's how it really all starts to network together. So um, it has helped me tremendously. Because like I said, being a woman-owned business, I get in 23% of the bids in New York State being a woman-owned business, which is a lot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how does- So it really has helped me very much, having that woman's status. Mm -hmm. So how do you look for the subcontractor? How do you find them? Say you get a, a contract and you need to sell well, out. Um, I look for people that are in my, okay. I, I look for people that are in my field. So um, like, for example, if I need an electrician, I have to make sure that he has, well, in my case, it's a little different because I have state contracts. So I have to make sure he's certified in New York state, number one. And he has a unique ID number, which everybody does have. If you're in New York state, um, like any type of part, especially an electrician, high voltage, low voltage. So I contact them, I call them and ask them, would you like State and we'll give you a majority of the you know the work fire alarms and I have a lot of subcontractors on my state contract and I have a woman owned business that has to be on there also with me and she does all my uh, needs for uh, distribution for wiring uh, cameras uh, keys access control mm -hmm. so you that's how you do it you just you know pick up your telephone it really does work 
mm-hmm. especially when you're a woman-owned business. You know, people like to do business with you. And then, like I said, I get a lot of, like with the railroad, I get a lot of stuff. I get a lot of stuff through New York State, New York City. Mm-hmm. So have you looked at any capability statements? Have there been any I'm, certified businesses that had given you a capability statement to to for upcoming opportunities that you may have to for them to be the next person that you contact to get that job the capability um, no actually I, I actually I have dealt with these people for a while like so I um no I haven't had any opportunities like that but I I wouldn't mind it if people actually took down my email and they were in my field mm-hmm. so they could be listed on my contract too you know mm-hmm. okay So, have you received? So, okay. So, I know we, when you came on, you talked about um, some contracts that you just got with an MTA. Do you want to share with us what those contracts are? Well, we're working with, um, actually, I'm working with the MTA. Well, I should say the JFK um, project. Um, there's a new Terminal One going up. Mm-hmm. I'm sure uh, if you're a woman owned business in the state of New York or even a minority owned, I'm sure they're aware of this. Um, so actually, I, w- I went in there not too long ago, had a meeting with them, a meeting with their architects. And, you know, we've been very getting involved in that. So that's a very, very big project. Right. Do you have any advice for, uh, let's say, a business owner looking for certification? Um, what they can do, like what what advice can you give them, especially during this time that they can how they can utilize the, the certification to the fullest? Well, if they have a field that they specialize in um even if it's equipment wise or um distribution wise they should reach out to companies to see if they could be put on their contracts Mm -hmm. because that would help them Mm -hmm. tremendously so there's like say if they have products to sell so you so you know i i'm a distributor for a lot of products so excuse me if you go up to my you'll see all the product so I look for people in my area that want to be placed on my contract but if they have parts or, or like I said products to sell and in any field there's contracts in New York State for everything you know that Ken you're right mm-hmm. yeah so you know if they could be placed you know their name on as a subcontractor they have it made because all it takes is one call I just had a call three weeks ago just you know them using my name because they needed equipment I just made without doing any installation I sold recorders, emergency recorders. I made $20,000 without lifting a finger, okay. sh- shipping. So mm-hmm. do you understand what I'm saying? It works out. So it benefits them. Even if they search like the OGS mm-hmm. contracts of what they do, uh, if they do, I'm just giving you an example. If they do uh, bobby pins, mm-hmm. I'm just giving you an example. If they you know, sell them and they manufacture them, they could go look on the state contract and ask both these people to see if they could be listed as okay. a subcontractor. So it's all about networking. It's all about networking. It truly is. But you know, once you open that door, a mm-hmm. lot of doors Definitely. open for you. Definitely. Thank you. Thank yeah. you for sharing your name. Oh, okay. no problem. So we'll move on to Patricia. Okay. Uh, we'll come back for questions a little bit, uh, Lorraine. Um, yeah, actually, I started quite um, like three years ago and um, became certified with New York City and then later with New York State and then Port Authority of New York, New Jersey. But what I realized is the most important thing is to find out what you really want to sell. Is that what <laughs> we need? Is that um, my own advice is just to start small something small and then you grow from, from there. And then another thing is to register for a passport. In New York City, it's a system called passport. What passport does when you are certified, if you have your name there and they know the product that you're supplying, you will always get some, they will always put something discretionary items in there for you as an, as an MWBE to be for. And then they have um, a, a, a maximum of 500,000 contracts for MWBEs. You register with them. So once they need a contract, they will always put something in there for you, then for you to bid for. So um, now I know that she was talking about the JFK. JFK, the thirty percent utilization for MWBEs. Mm-hmm. So that's also a good opportunity. And then another thing is that they have something called MWBE directory with New York City. 
you have. Yes. So they can also go there to find out the list of MWBEs. Then in, in, that, in that place, you'll be able to find out who, who are the prime contractors that sell what you have, that That's need correct. what you have, then you can register as a subcontractor. But either, you know, certifying is very, very good because they will, you will always get invites to bid in one way or the other. So if, it doesn't matter whether it, once they have you there, they will always send you something to bid for. Mm -hmm. It depends on whether you want to bid for it or not. But the key thing is just to start small, know what you really want to do, supply to them or what you what you're doing and you do it well mm -hmm. and then you start small before you know you start growing you can start adding all that things in mm -hmm. so patricia yeah. you have an interesting story right <laughs> on how you came into being you know in the, the business owner and receiving status so can you share that story like what you were doing before you started your business um before i was i had over 20 something years experience in corporate America. Um, from vice president of technology at JP Morgan Chase and then Goldman Sachs. So in 2016, I just decided to start up my own business. So what I did was maybe to start with the states because they are more, that's the safest I can, I can get in. So then another thing now, what do I want to do? So I said, let me start small. What is it that they will always need that they, you know, the city or any government will always need? So I decide to do paper. So the paper is um, hand or commercial paper products. So with commercial paper products, so I be there for my first contract actually mm -hmm. in 2018. Mm -hmm. So I near I missed that contract with only five with only five cents, mm -hmm. um, which was in, in I was surprised to millions. Then what I did actually was to get you know people to have my own product develop my own product find a manufacturer mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so from there in 2019 i got a contract with um new york city housing authority but then comes who we had funded there was no funding because i knew mm -hmm. i'm also it's a completely different area from my field mm -hmm. so it was difficult to get uh, funding right so right. But that was there, when I came to you guys. Yes, but there um, is funding out there for MW. Oh, there are a lot of funding out there for small businesses. There are so many of them. So, yes. Um, and now the stories are changing because even with the with the pandemic, mm -hmm. there's a lot of funding now that there are, you know, even grant opportunities. So it's actually a good time to start your own business. So funding will not be an issue. But I was also blessed to have come to your office and then you and Dr. Uh, uh, Dr. Gordon, you did made phone calls and so on, mm -hmm. and likely connected me. So by the time I could finish the contract before the end of the year, I had another contract mm -hmm. um, with, uh, with uh, uh, Cass. Then at the end of another, at the end of last year, I had another one with State. So mm -hmm. there are so many, and you, you know, even now I've started bidding for technology contracts, which are actually my main area. The, the most important thing is to start small, mm -hmm. know what you really want to, want to do. Mm -hmm. You know, it's about passion and what you know you can give to them. Mm -hmm. Start small and then you grow from there. Okay. And I just wanted to also mention that Patricia was awarded the New York State Entrepreneur of the Year for 2021 Beautiful. by Empire State Development as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Do you have Beautiful. any other strategies or advice that you can give out for, um, let's say, how to network, how to yeah, network? Give up. You know, yeah. <laughs> are, you, are, you, are you still talking to me? Yes, Patricia. Okay. Um, networking is good, but the only, thing, the only thing is that you have to have something to network with. Mm -hmm. You know, if you have to start something first and you start networking, mm -hmm. um, is to know what you want, where you want to be, and what you know you can do very well, that you can network. So it's okay, but then you don't even need, networking is good, but it shouldn't, you know, even if it's not a priority, because for now, you have all these things available to you. They are looking for NWBEs. There are also so many companies 
because I, I know right. I used I, and I get calls every now and then people who wants an uh, MWBE to be able to make up their MWBE utilizations. Mm. So if you want to be a part of it, the, the most important thing is get yourself ready, register, get certified, and then you take it from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great, great advice. You're right. She's right. Mm -hmm. Yes. The opportunities mm -hmm. then not get certified. Exactly. Yes. Natasha, hi, you're next in line. <laughs> Natasha, hi. Oh, I'm sorry. I was muted. I'm steady talking. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so I don't know if you have <laughs> So do you want me just to tell a little bit about myself? How do you want? So your, your, your certification, your business, your certification status, um, what it can do or what you've been doing with the certification, um, any contracting opportunities, if you have any, and advice or strategies for networking. Okay, so I'm NWBE certified. I actually started my consulting business in, I think it was 2006. And um, as a consultant, believe it or not, I worked <laughs> to help other contractors um, get contracts, but I had never thought of doing it for myself. And then I said, let me just take a leap of faith and see how this works for me. I might as well have this certification. So I think it was 2018 that I came into your office and um, I said, I'm on a mission to get this certification <laughs> and I'm going to get my paperwork in the fastest you've ever gotten an MWBE certified. <laughs> and uh, I had a goal and um, I brought in all my paperwork. I kept all of my appointments. Mm -hmm. And um, I think, Kenya, you said the process for me was, was pretty quick. Mm -hmm. it, it really, really did not take me long. I didn't miss any of the meetings. I didn't miss any of the mm -hmm. trainings. Um, because my goal was to get certified. It was always a backup plan, but then I started to realize that it was something that could be beneficial to me and to the people that I helped. I would have a better understanding of what the process was. Beautiful. Beautiful. Um, oh, okay. So um, let's talk a little bit about the application process. So that paperwork, those supporting documents, uh, the application, the information you had to put it in there. How do you find that as, um, do you find that as doable, challenging, or it, it, it's something that, you know, um, I know a lot of uh, business owners get frustrated in this process at the point where they have to upload the documents. What's right. your take on doing that? Um, it was a lot of paperwork. Um, <laughs> It definitely took a lot of paperwork, but because my, my background was compliant, um, the paperwork really wasn't so much a problem for me. Whatever I need, I... right now, because I'm sitting with Kenya and we need this paperwork to be done and completed. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, it wasn't as difficult, uh, as daunting as it seemed because of my compliance background. So that part of it, um, that's where my success lies in helping other people get the certification. Um, just because I did the process mm -hmm. and um, it wasn't daunting to me. So I found that to be very helpful when, I, when I'm helping someone. Okay. Um, are you aware of the capability statement, Latasha? Yeah, yes. Now that is that seems to be uh, the hardest thing for a new uh women-owned businesses, MWBEs to get, mm -hmm. because you're kind of condensing everything about your business in one page. Yeah, the resume. And what are you putting together <laughs> an entire <laughs> package? Yes. Mm -hmm. Right, but you don't need an entire package. You need that one sheet of paper that you can yes. easily pass out at networking yes. events. Yes. And um, that could lead to a lot of success. No, no, get on the phone. The success. Mm -hmm. Keep it simple. Keeping yeah. it simple really works here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so do you have any advice for procurement, looking up those opportunities, like where would you go 
to find an opportunity? Um, the it's not called Sam anymore, right? Is it still considered? It is called. That's the uh, federal contract. Federal, yes. right? Yes, right. Yes. So, I'm in New York, so I'm like you. You can go right. into the, the various New York sites. That's I, correct. I am a person who likes networking, um, so I find that to be um, beneficial. Mm -hmm. And um, just as a group of women, I feel like we are more nurturing and more willing to help one another. Mm -hmm. um, so I found that that seemed to work for me. Okay, great. Thank you for sharing. We'll come back for Q and A in a little bit. Okay. Oh wait, before I sign off, can you? Can I interrupt for a second? Yeah, go ahead, Lorraine. Um, I, I wanted to tell them if they also knew new people or even people that have status already, uh, if they go up to the offices of general services for New York State, mm -hmm. that's every contract listed there. Mm -hmm. um, if they find something that they have a common interest with, mm -hmm. they could actually call them and see if they could be placed as a you know minority woman owned business and then they give their names out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. That, right. You don't need a contract. You could just go look and give a call to the Albany number mm -hmm. and they, they're they willing. I mean, if you have a unique ID number and, you know, New York State unique ID number, they're willing to, you know, help you. They'll send you people like here. Would you like to help this person? Would you like to help this? That's how I have to go about it, too. They also give me sheets of references. Mm -hmm. OK, good to know. Can you share that number? Can she share yeah. that number? Lorraine, can you put that in the chat? Uh, yeah, how do I chat on here? I don't even know. My God. Oh, well, if you could say it, Latasha, do you have a pen? You have, it's, um, wait, wait. Hold on one second. Okay, no problem. I can even send it to Kenya in an in email, you know. No, I'm ready. You can give it to me now. Okay, it's offices. It's uh, Office of General Services, OGS, okay, that's New York familiar. State, NYS. Okay. So you can go OGS, NYS, and it'll bring you up to their, their numbers up in Albany. Mm -hmm. And there's so many contracts that are out there. I don't know what you do. You do consulting, I believe. But well, people I look do. for minority woman-owned businesses to place on their contract because they need them. Because we have to utilize, they get 17%. Some get 15%, some people get 6% of the contract utilization. Right. My yes. primary business now, I do the consulting, but I also do PPE for um, medical uh, gowns, like for dental offices. Well, I'm telling you, go up to those contracts. You will be will. quite loved. Okay. I'm going to look for that tomorrow. And very welcomed. And very welcomed. Yep. Okay. 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 Yep. Great. Thank you. And don't forget, it's a whole entire New York state that they're giving you everybody. Yeah. You understand when they give you something and they're going to tell you, hey, would you want to go on so-and-so's contract? It might be up in Albany or it might be in Rochester. But if you're able, you have it made. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's great. So Thank I you. don't know what that. I have a question in the chat, but I, I believe we're going to go on uh, to the other panelists and then we'll start Oops. and go into the question. Okay. The next panelist, Yolanda, how are you? Been waiting very patiently. <laughs> Good evening, Kenya. Hi. Hi. My name is Yolanda Valdez. I am the owner of Empower Contracting. We are a construction company, oh. Long Island. Can you hear me, Kenya? Yes, perfect. Okay, perfect. Um, we're a small business. Um, we, I am MWBE certified, New York State. I, I started my certification process slow because it can be overwhelming for small businesses and owners and everything. Just getting. There. Um, so, you know, I started New York City, then I went to New York State. Um, so I don't know where your panelists or, um, you know, your student, your, the participants are in their business structure right now, but, you know, just start small, start somewhere, just get the ball rolling and everything else. Like everything that you do is going to, you know, empower you to be successful down the road and everything else. And just, as you get the paperwork, try to file it, 
you know, scan it in, file it, put it in a folder because a lot of the stuff is repetitious, right? It's like your state documentation with your, your tax ID, your last tax returns, <laughs> you know, just a lot of stuff. And it is overwhelming, like I said. So when you do, you know, when you start small and when you start scanning it and everything else, then even the renewal process, once you guys are certified, the renewal process becomes simpler if you got, very simple. you know, just have some kind of system in place. So I, you know, I, I believe that that's what helps. I know that um, your other panelists said about compliance. Um, it took me a long time to get there because I was like, oh, why? And every time I feel like I was looking for the same exact piece of paper over and over again. So that's yeah. why I'm giving them <laughs> It's like, hey, just scan it, put it in a folder with certifications. And then you're like, oh, okay, I need this. I have that. I have that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, stuff like that can help you. Mm -hmm. I have, um, in New York State's um, contracts have been a great success for me because yeah. I'm doing, I know that some of the other ones are doing things. I do services, right? Because I'm in the construction field. So um, we have a labor force and services for that. So it just depends on what they're looking for. Obviously, like, you know, they do need um, New York State 1515, sometimes it's 17 different contracts. I, I have worked in the past for, you know, to fulfill several different um, state on agencies of construction and home construction or um, for some of the big agencies. We also did um, federal work. We've also done the MTA work. So it's definitely opened up opportunities. And I definitely believe that I know networking, some people, you know, once you figure out what you're doing and you don't have to be New York state certified to network. Mm -hmm. um, I do believe that, you know, going into like Kenya's work group and even talking and asking questions, I think is key because of, not everybody has the answers. And I believe that small business will help, the, help each other just by mm -hmm. sharing. Mm -hmm. I truly believe that as well, Yolanda. Thank you for sharing that. Um, so, um, you know, you're a, a success as well here at the center. Um, so you've done big contracts, Thank right? You, yes. Big contracts. And um, so getting those type of contracts, um, what did you have to do to land those? I don't know what the dollar, I remember the dollar amount, but I know it's a big one. What did you have to do to get a contract like that? You know, to be... To be able to land big contracts and stuff like that, I really think that you need to be present in the room. Like that is really part of that. And I think the system can become overwhelming, but once you know what you're doing, meaning or what your product is, what your services are, right? Start small and continue networking and find it and find what works for you and your company. Mm -hmm. um, I think sometimes like it just became overwhelming because you get so many requests for all over the thing. And you kind of want to do everything because you're hungry and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm going to be successful. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? And you can fail at that, honestly, because mm -hmm. I think, you know, then you don't get to focus. You don't get to streamline what you're trying to do. And then, you know, you, you can't do everything at 25%, right? You got to put your hundred percent in. So I think starting small and concentrating on those contracts would be key. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's what's helped me become successful in that. Um, I, I landed the big contract by continuing my networking and being in the room and by mentoring, right? Mm -hmm. So by listening to other people and them inviting me and say, hey, come on, do this. And I think you would be successful in that. And just by having other people reach out to me and help me along the process is really what gave me the encouragement to even bid on those projects. Mm -hmm. Okay. So those phase, the RFPs, are, is that something that, I mean, you could do, right? Anyone who goes after a contract or a bid should be able to go through those RFPs. Just, it's self-explanatory. It tells yeah. you what it needs, right? Yes. And just yes. make sure you honor those dates, right? The and dates that's all it is. And once again, it's just, you can't get discouraged, right? Because I remember one of my first contracts, um, I just, I messed it all up, right? Like I went in and let's just say, I'm thinking I'm bidding, you know, <laughs> whatever it was, $250,000. Meanwhile, I ended up bidding $6 million because some of them are different. Like they have like columns of like, what's your unit price? But then like my unit price was, you know, $5,000, but then it had the quantity, which it wasn't in quantity at this point, but right, it was something right. else like a different wording. 
And I just put, oh, $5,000. So they're like, oh, you're charging $5,000 per five, you know, per piece times 500. So it totally <laughs> changed my thinking. I'm like, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it was an aha moment. It was a little embarrassing at the time, but they actually use it as a teachable thing now. So we kind of joke about it. But it's things like that, that you learn yes. and, you know, you go forward and that's just part of growing and trying to be in the small business, which, you know, I think it takes, um, it takes courage to just enter this field in itself because, you know, we can work for somebody and get a paycheck every two weeks. So we can take the risk of trying to do something, um, you know, with the American dream of having your own business. This is for mm -hmm. Lorraine and for you, Yolanda. So when responding to those RFPs and they, when they're asking for pricing, for the, for the work, right? For you to provide a price for your services that you offer. Yes. Now, what would you advise someone to go about that? How do you decide on which price to put down? All right. Well, mine's a little different story, Ken See, I own two New York state contracts. Mm -hmm. So my price is public. Mm -hmm. um, so say if they went up for an HID, you know, the HID fobs, you know, to, you know, your key to get in somewhere, a thin line HID. They go to my contract, they see my price. It's listed, let's say, for $243.99 on New York State OGS contract. Mm -hmm, That's mm -hmm. what I have to sell it for. Mm -hmm. So usually I, I don't get many bids. I just have people call me mm -hmm. and I do services, as you know, Kenya. I install radio rooms and everything like that. So mm -hmm. everything is, mine's like in black and white on paper. So uh, for me to make a price higher, I cannot, mm -hmm. but if I really wanted a client and, you know, when there was another person out there that did almost what I did, um, I, I could go lower, but I have to explain to New York state why I went lower on that price. Mm -hmm. okay. So I have a li little different scenario because I own two New York state contracts. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you understand? Yeah, because that was that was my next question. It's, my price is publicly published. If you have those prices, yes, it's published. Right. So, so how, if you type in my name, Lorraine Roberts, Hello Alert, and you'll see all my contracts and all my prices are published. Mm -hmm. So, so that that's why question. I just I really do, I get a lot of stuff in a lot of bids. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, I bids in, okay. but I have to go by my New York that's already published. So they know what really my number is. Mm -hmm. So like if someone came in with a smaller number. So I, I mainly do government and municipalities, as you know, Kenya. Mm -hmm. um, so it's winning the contract. Right. Right. And the smallest number. Right. It's percentage. right. Winning the contract and giving a percentage off your product that, um, that actually makes it cheaper than anybody else. Mm -hmm. That's what it has. So cool. like I've owned uh, two New York state contracts since 2008. So mm -hmm. my price is published out there. So I'm not really bidding on anything because my price is already out there. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Yes. How about you, Patricia? Do you have to do the, the price? So that's my scenario because I am a state contract holder. Okay, <laughs> thank you. What's that? Patricia, do you guys and Yolanda, um, how about you? Do you have to see yourself when you're responding to those those contracts? Do you have to price yourself out a little cheaper than what your comp competition is doing? Or do you, you keep a price yeah. steady all the way through um, with the services? What, the, what, what I think, um, you know, you have to, one thing I realize is that you price low, you try to price low, but then don't, you know, the profit margin should be reasonable. Yes. So don't try, you know, try, you, you know, cut down the profit uh, margin so that I'll be able to get the contract. At the same time, don't do it in a way that you're cheating yourself, that you're losing. But the good thing too is that I find out that most of these uh, agencies, there's always a 10% at the end of every year that they increase. increase. So you can make up with that. But for you to get the bid, you have to be reasonable of the next person coming after you know other people that are competing with you okay how about you Yolanda? um for me it's different because mine is construction so it just depends on what the services are and what the project is right because we have specs and plans mm -hmm. so we bid it accordingly um i would say just not to um just i don't undermine like my staff you know what I'm saying? Where the project management, uh, um, safety manager, all the things that, that go into a contract. Mm -hmm. So you just got to make sure that all your things are covered, administration and mm -hmm. everything else in there. 
and there's a lot of opportunities out there and you can't win them all. That's okay. I don't think, you know, you can go in low at the beginning, trying to get your stuff work. But once you guys, um, you know, you build that up, don't, don't short sell yourself because that's the whole point of trying to build the business and everything out there. So, you know, just trying to start somewhere, I understand. But once you know what your product is and what your profit margin is for you to be successful, um, it's important to pay yourself, right? And I know as small businesses, that was one of the first things that took a long time for me, you know, to be like, okay, well, can I pay myself yet? <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, um, <laughs> yeah, it, it was important in that. So it's, it's, it's things like that, that I believe, um, you know, you go out there, you try and, and you see, just don't low, you know, and, and do, do the smaller contracts at those numbers, right? Because that's, then, then you're going to know what you're going to do. You're not going to do a New York State something that you committed to at the beginning, you're going to do something smaller on a smaller scale level and everything else as you mm -hmm. learn and grow for your own business and your product that you're offering. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for you're sharing. Guys. I do have another panelist, but they're in the waiting area. Jay, can you let in Rollo, please? <laughs> sure. Thank you. S R A L O? Yes. Hi, Rob. Hey, well, can you well, hear me? Hi, yes. Hi. Hi. <laughs> I, I can't see myself. I know, I know, but we can hear you. <laughs> okay, okay. That's good. It's better than nothing, I guess. Yeah. I thought I was going to miss the whole thing. No way. You were here early, too. I was. <laughs> um, so um, so you hear what we were discussing, Rob. So yes. I just want you to, you know, introduce yourself. Tell us about your business and your certification status. A little bit about the application process. Any contracting opportunities that you may have received. And um, some strategies or advice for networking for procurement. Okay, well, I'm Rob Henry. Um, my business is Java Star. And um, I so, sell. Go back right here. First regular one, the yellow one. I'm getting some crosstalk. I hear that. Yeah, I hear okay. that. Back. These two are handy. Oops. Okay. Okay. So sorry about that. That's okay. Yeah. So um, my my business is Java Star, and I sell coffee. Um, originally I started it was a private label coffee. And you know, that was my goal, just to sell coffee. And then um, when I came to meet with you guys One minute. at the EAP, when I came to meet with you guys at the EAP, you kind of opened my thinking up to a larger reality. And I now not only sell coffee, but I sell like coffee cups and stirrers and you know the coffee lids and so forth and all these other things. I'm even about to get into renting the uh, K-cup machine. Okay. because i've gotten i've gotten a lot of requests for those so um yeah coffee is my is my business and it's not just the actual product itself because i'm selling all the other things all the amenities that go along with selling the coffee uh you talked about the process as it relates to being certified um it's a labyrinth of paperwork that i would never be able to do on my own right well. so I'm very grateful for the EAP because you've helped me in that mm -hmm. in that process. And so I'm, I'm definitely grateful for that. But um, it's a process you definitely want to be part of where you have some things on the table that could potentially help you grow your business. And it doesn't just have to be government agencies per se. It could be SUNY schools, hospitals, et cetera, mm -hmm. that could help you to expand your market base. So you want to think about how your goods and services can be offered right, to government agencies and some other entities. And um, that's a whole nother market that a person may not have thought of per se. So when I originally got on, I was looking for opportunities online. I found someone who was selling shoelaces and, you know, the military, they have those little shiny black boots with the skinny shoelaces yeah. and a privately owned business was supplying the shoelaces to the, uh, to the, to the military. And so uh, you could be uh, a privately owned business and you could be a supplier of shoelaces for the military and I could potentially be a million dollar business. So, you know, who would have thought of that, you know? So contractors might uh, be able to offer, um, well, you talked about the subcontracting opportunities. And if anyone has any questions about that, I would definitely say get a hold of the EAP and um, they can most definitely help you with that. And um, multi-year contracts is money you can actually count on. 
And uh, once you show you can do business with the with government entities, the word will spread because they do talk to each other. And um, um Natasha, can the you hear me? Am I still on? Yeah, you're still yeah. on. Okay. Sorry, yeah, I, I need just, to mute. And I was just saying the EAP can be very instrumental and in, in, instrumental in helping to facilitate that process for small businesses that might want to get involved in, in the contracting process. So have you received any, uh, let's say, contracts that you have um, accepted and went after and have done? Actually, I have. I have uh, not like multi-year contract situation, but I did sell product to some government agencies. Okay. And it was definitely beneficial and uh, profitable for my for my business. So I, I have. I have had some success doing, you know, dealing with the contracting process. So, yes. Mm -hmm. And what about networking? How does that work for you? Um, you know, I would say if a person wants to network, do they still do the pre-bid conferences? Uh, anyone? Yes. They do still. Okay, so if you want to network and you want to um, get involved in the contracting situation, you can attend those pre-bid conferences and try to get some FaceTime and um, give businesses and everyone you can meet, you know, your card. Um, I got involved with the um, Long Island African American Chamber of Commerce and they also they always say that people do business with people they know, like and trust. Mm -hmm. And so if you can yeah. go to one of those pre bid conferences and you can just try to meet people and try to get FaceTime with people and try to give out your information, uh, that would be a good way to network. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I totally agree. Um, yeah. so, so is there any other uh, advice or strategies that one of the panelists would like to share before we go into q and I would like to give some more advice if I could. If sure you once can. you get <laughs> once you get certified within <laughs> once you get certified within the system, you have to um really be aggressive in trying to pursue opportunity. You know, a person might think because they're certified, opportunities are going to just come and land in their lap. You have to work your own show. You have to make phone calls. You have to send emails. You have to try to go to the pre-bid conferences and you have to try to do your best to um, you know, pursue opportunity because everything is not gonna just land in your lap magically. So if I could give any advice, I would say that because a lot of people might think that they're certified and they can rest back and just wait for that ultimate email yeah. where they're gonna get this multi-bid contract and it doesn't necessarily work that way. So you, know, you have to be in it to win it. So you gotta work your own show. So a small business owner who doesn't have staff and they're the only ones there and they're certified, what advice can you guys give them um, as to really fully utilizing this certification and finding the time to network so that they are considered for opportunities? I'll let somebody else take that. Well, I, I gave you an answer before, which is very easy. I told them to call the offices of general services. They always look for minority owned women businesses, minority owned businesses to put on their list, you know, mm -hmm. and to hand out to a lot of companies like to like, utilize them. And, and also with, within New York City, there's a system called Passport. Yeah. Register in there and then look for contracts there. That, that also helps. Has anyone been on the New York State contract reporter? Yeah, contract? New York State contract reporter is also good. But the only issue is that is they're not going to, what you have to constantly go in there to look for opportunities. Mm -hmm. but with the passport, yes, you can look for opportunities. And they also have some opportunities that they put into your into your inbox. Mm -hmm. That's an MWB or you know, some. Okay. They throw in some opportunities in there based on the profile you set up. Mm -hmm. So uh -huh. advice, don't wait. Um, if you're certified, network, get out there. And Your name out there. Hi, hello. Yep. Oh, okay, I thought you were speaking. No, no, no. I said put your name out there to yes. all these agencies yes. and tell them your status, that you're a minority-owned business or a woman-owned business, you know? A, and, lot of those, uh, a lot of those sites, too, you would have to register on there as a vendor. Mm -hmm. on their on their site and their portal mm -hmm. yes yeah, you have to register mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. so if there's no other advice that you guys would like to share with participants i'm going to go into q a i have a few questions in the chat 
the first question is, when you offer a service, do you really need a team? When you offer what? A service? A service. Do you need a team? Um, Roxanne, can you unmute? You need what? A team? A team. So do you need staff? Uh, well, if you're offering a service that you could do yourself, no, you don't need a staff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. The next one um, looks like what is an RSP? And I believe you want to say RFP. Yes. <laughs> right. Can someone um, uh, explain what an RFP is? RFP is request for proposal. Yes. RFP is request for proposal. Mm -hmm. um, some of them are RFI, mm -hmm. RFI, which is also a request for information. Mm -hmm. So all these are available, but all that it is, is I'm requesting something from you. Can you do this? Mm -hmm. That's something you can do. That's then you have to respond. So your response is the proposal. So if it's something you can do, then you okay, bring great. your host. Your yes. Host. Razali would like to know um, how old, why we need, I'm sorry, yeah, Jaffrey one, why we need a capability statement? Why do we need a capability statement? Capability statement is like your elevator pitch. So that lets the uh, agency know what you're capable of doing. So you would have to have an, uh, a capability statement just to let them know what goods and services you offer. That's mandatory. Mm -hmm. Um, so, Anyone else? That, that's all good? That's good. The services that you provide and that you could withhold your, you know, mm -hmm. withhold the services that you could provide to them. Mm -hmm. What you do. I call it the business resume. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. correct. <laughs> One pager. And, mm -hmm. you know, depending on how, how established the business is, mm -hmm. uh, it may, I may see more than one, but usually it's a one pager. Yeah. Well, I try to give you a one page, a yeah. <laughs> paragraph if I can. <laughs> <laughs> How old should a company be? Is this for certification, Razili? Really, I don't think it really matters. I think six months. You have to be in service for six months in New York City. To apply for certification, you have to be in business for at least a year. Yeah, that's correct. To be eligible. When I did was six months, okay. Yes. Okay. And I have, oh, there's another question. Okay. Because so you have to prove a tax statement that you are a business yeah. and uh, so forth and so on, all your little paperwork, of course. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, one year. Yep. Okay. So I filed a year ago and I've been told it will take five years to get certified. Mm -hmm. No. Any no. tips regarding expediting the certification? Yeah. Go to Kenya. <laughs> <laughs> <Basically>. <laughs> So yeah, <laughs> that, that's advice for expediting that certification. Well, I guess I'll have your eggs, you know, all your about, you know, all your eggs in one basket to bring to you and to go over everything and to start there. But yeah. mm -hmm. so if you're not a client of the EAC Center, you would reach out to us, you know, become yeah. a client so that I can assist you with this process. You're um, wonderful. Okay. Not sure if the application is already um, submitted. Mm -hmm. Oh, it looks like it may have been already submitted. So then definitely reach out to the center and we'll assist you. Any yes. other questions? Oh, I think I see more here. The consulting business, how do you get contracts if I have a life coaching business? Consulting. That's Luke Latasha. One second. Okay, I'm sorry. I had to step out into the other meeting. Okay. I'm sorry. What was the What was the question? So the question is, um, how do you get contracts if I have a life coaching business? Huh. Well, if you if you want to get contracts, you have to you have to like what I would recommend would be networking. You want to talk to everybody. You want to go to the, like earlier we discussed the OGS site. You want to put it out there to the different agencies as to what type of business service you're offering. I also just wanted to quickly say in regard to the certification, the most important thing is to make sure when you get your paperwork together, 
that you are organized, that you go down that list and you check off every item that you need. Make sure you have it so that you don't have to keep going back. It's very important um, when you do government contracts, um, compliance is my background, that you are in compliance because compliance can cause you, um, if your paperwork is right, it can cause you to obtain a contract. And if it's not, even if you get the contract, it can be pulled from you. So compliance and making sure that your, your paperwork is in order is very, very important. But networking and getting out to these meet and greets and these seminars that they have, having that capability page, having your business card attached to it, following up with people that you meet and keep it out there. Send it out to the universe and to the world. This is what I do. This is the service or the business that I'm offering. And eventually you will be shocked. It will come back. You will get that first contract. Mm -hmm. So I have, thanks Natasha. Anyone mm -hmm. else like to share? Or well, Natasha nailed it, she's good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I have another question in the chat. Um, so I know we're gonna have, I'm actually gonna have another webinar that actually talks about the certification process and the documents that you'll need to, mm -hmm. uh, for the certification application. But so tonight they're asking, we're gonna try to address this, address this question, you know, um, but if anyone else could share this, I'll, I'll talk about it if I don't hear it in the response, but how do, we, how do you become MWBE certified and what kind of document do you need? This is the question. Okay. <clears throat> How do you Let become MWBE certified? Yes, you need. Um, I know you need a, a copy of your um, registration, company registration. You need your form of ID, mm -hmm. like you know, to make sure you actually. Um, one is that you're registered, you're a company that is registered in the United uh, in New York. Okay. You have to have your company, your corporate uh, title paper, and then you have to have your driver, driver's license, any form of ID, mm -hmm. passport or something to make Absolutely. sure that you have that. You will. Then depending on whether you're a corporation or, or then any your structure, then that determines the other documents that they will need from you. Okay. So, uh, these ones are just on top of my head, the few documents they need. And then another thing is that if you want to register within New York, New York City, you have an opportunity to submit for both schools and also states. So one application can give you all that. I said that you just have a subsection for that. And then your financial information is also needed. Mm -hmm. your bank and all the other things. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you would have to, in addition, demonstrate that you're able to sell your services, right? So you have to have business activity. Yeah, capability statement should be there too, so. And your, and your resume. Yeah, oh yeah, that's yeah. exactly your resume. So the other documents, but just these are just the few up on top of my head. Mm -hmm. So that webinar that will go into this a little bit more in detail will be scheduled in December. Um, and I believe that will be about the 16th. Um, it's still in the planning phase, um, but we'll send out an email and you'll get um, the link to register when that goes out. So um, we'll just move on to the next question. Uh, Jake, can you put my contact information in the chat, please? Sure. Billy? Started, the, there's another question here. Started company two years ago, but didn't, able to do much due to COVID-19, can I still be qualified for MWBE? Well, if he has a corporation for two years and if he did some work, wouldn't he be able to qualify? Yeah, he has to demonstrate yeah. at least he was able to sell his services for at least a dollar. Right, if he's right, was yes. So yes. even if you made a dollar or five That's correct, yeah. You could still yes. qualify as long as you meet the other eligibility uh, requirements. Uh, requirements, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, next question. Do you help with certification in all counties in New York or is the certification good throughout New York? It's New York State certification. That's correct. So it's out throughout- Yeah, county certification is also. Yes, 
You could register, you could do Suffolk County, Nassau County, mm -hmm. federal government. I would tell people if you want to, I do as many as you can, but do them all at once because they all ask for the same thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the New York State application, I call it the one-stop shop. You can also right. uh, certify with three other agencies as well. Um, I say do it that one time, because if not, you'll be supplying that, that same information to all three again. So that's correct. Uh, do it that one and they'll pull it from the one application um, unless they need additional information, which they'll email you and let and ask, request that. Um, but for the most part, just take care of those addendums in this one application. Okay. Do you yes. have, okay. Uh, where is the local office in Suffolk County? Local office, Brazili, I'm not sure what you mean by local office. In Suffolk Maybe County. where you go. Uh, it just says local office. I'm not sure if he's meaning where our location is or maybe the state local office. I guess he'll clarify that in a minute. So yes, made some money. Thank you. Um, let me just check up. Are there any other questions? If so, please unmute yourself or raise your hand. Okay, so I, I guess we will, um, I just wanted to end off um, to say, I, I wanna thank you guys for coming. And, and thank talking you. about the certification. There is a lot of information to learn about this certification and the whole process, which, you know, we're breaking it up so that it's not too overwhelming <laughs> with that information. Um, so it'll be in web, we're doing a, sort of like a webinar series so just be on the lookout for the next one. Um, again, we'll send it to you. You'll be emailed uh, that link to join. Um, just just want to see if there's any other questions before I actually end. Nope. Okay. So uh, I if, will be talking to you soon, Kenya. Yes, no worries. Um, so there's no other questions. And um, I guess we can end for the night. Mm. Well, I wish you all a good night. Thanks, Kenya. Yes, you're welcome. Thanks again. Thank you, Thank you again, Kenya. Okay. Thank you for the invite. You're welcome, Thank Roll. You. Thank you. Yes. Patricia, yes. good night. Yolanda, yes. thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay. Thank you, Kenya. You too. Enjoy. Good night. Good night.